today we'll be focusing on youth digital creativity. Myself, I'm Neris, and I'm one of the facilitators of the course, contributors together with my colleague Limonas, as well as a lot of experts in the field. We managed to uh, create quite an interesting and useful, hopefully useful resources, materials on how you can deliver a professional digital youth work. And today we'll have a uh, guest speaker, Anu, from uh, BN Extra, which is an organization working a lot with media education, uh, using digital technologies to spark and support development of young people's digital creativity. Yes, thank you so much for having me here as part of this interesting MOOC. I need to start off by telling that the topic of my talk today doesn't really exist. I do not believe there to be a separate phenomenon as digital creativity, but there is simply creativity as the probably most interesting and powerful capacity of us human beings. So what I'm going to be talking about today more precisely is how to experience creativity with digital tools and technologies and why this is so important. I have been working with young people and creative media production for almost three decades, starting in an analog world and today almost completely digital. My place in within the field of digital youth work is the fun corner. And I was really happy to read this word on your Padlet also. Someone I used to describe the work done by me and my team as you are the people who do all kinds of funny stuff with digital media with the kids. Subtext being while the others are responsible for the serious and important matters. I would like to question this and to do so by starting off with something really concrete. Let's say there was a girl's evening in a youth cafe and youth worker and a couple of girls, they have been playing with TikTok, recording videos, crazy videos, laughing a lot, looking at these videos, finally deciding not to upload any of them on the internet. So there were no visible results. This was certainly good youth work. It was a piece of good relationship work, but was it also a meaningful contribution to digital youth work? So in the next few minutes, we are going to explore what the meaning of this and uh, similar fun stuff is within the bigger picture of digital competencies why it is so important to foster digital creativity within youth work sector and how to do it. We frame this within this whole discourse of digital transformation. We have uh, artificial uh, intelligence and robotics quickly evolving, leaving us human beings with the question, what remains? in the future for us to do. And one consensus there seems to be is for creativity to be something artificial intelligence only can simulate but not truly produce. So we end up with the 21st century skills familiar to all of us. And certainly within I think all creative production processes, even the small and silly ones, they are training exactly these four skills. Now, this might sound to you like an invitation for youth work to join the national effort for competitive capacity. But I refuse to look at digital creativity solely from the narrow perspective of economics of economical usefulness. And I much more would like to regard it as an important contribution for a good and full life in complex and confusing times. Why? Because when we experience digital creativity, 
it affects us in many different ways. It can, it can change the way we feel about technology. It can change the way we see ourselves and it offers great opportunities to reflect and relate to the world. So let's start with about how we feel about technology. We often experience digital transformation as something that happens to us. Tsunamis and similar accidents do happen. Its effects are far reaching and for some parts, even a little bit scary as featured in popular TV shows like Black Mirror. By being digitally creative, we experience digital tools as something we can play with. And this is an important step in recognizing that technologies are made by and shaped by us people. We urgently need in all age groups, sexes and ethnics, more people who want to be actively involved in the process to become co-creators of our digital society. And being digitally creative is the first step in this direction. Next, I would like to invite you to recall the last moment when you created something yourself. How did you feel? How did it make you feel? You probably were a little bit surprised and probably also extremely proud. Experiencing our creativity makes us strong and happy. It has the capacity to make us strong and happy. And it is exactly this feeling of, I am able to, young people need to tackle complex future problems. Last bit, doing the fun stuff doesn't mean avoiding the big and relevant questions. Quite the contrary. My experience is you open up a creative space and the relevant issues step in. Young people quite often use creative production to reflect topics relevant for them at the moment. If we adults set the agenda, we might miss something important. There are quite a few popular misconceptions of creativity. The first one being creativity, seeing creativity as something divine, something some of us have and others sadly have not. Now, this is not true. We all have different kinds of creative potential. Only some of us can access it more easily or rather it is made easy for them to tap into their creativity. To these preconditions of creativity, I will come back a couple of minutes later. The second is seeing tools and materials as a source of creativity. This also is not true. They come with a kind of a full built-in possibilities, but it's up to us to use them or not. With our smartphones, with all the possibilities a smartphone offers. All of us could be uh, doing graphic design and editing videos every day, but few of us do. And the same is true for analog materials also. This good quality oil paint does not turn into an amazing picture by itself. Much more important than material and tools are the people around me, the kind of inspiration, encouragement, and support I receive, or as true for many young people, I do not receive. Because creativity is a delicate plant. From inside, what I need to bring with me in creative processes is motivation, I need to be able, I, I need to be willing to put in some effort and often creativity also 
requires a little bit of courage. And from outside, what I need is inspiration in terms of knowing, meeting, observing, creating people, seeing traces of creativity or products of creativity and living in a mindset that values creativity. But also creativity needs recognition. The results of our creativity are a part of us. We can be a little bit self-conscious about them, but we usually want them to be seen. Only we want them to be seen in the right way. Young creators do not need a patronizing patting on their head. You did it really nicely, but neither do they need crushing criticism and brutal competition. Knowing these preconditions of creativity, I would not now like to look in youth work and recognize the, the potential of youth work as a great place to foster digital creativity. Why isn't it so? Because sociologically speaking, youth work is a third place with different sets of rules than family life, or schools. Young people end into youth work space on voluntary basis, lead it, guide it by their own interests. There's no formal curriculum, there are no compulsory assignments. There is, this is very important, there's no assessment. But there is this, this aspiration after an, an respectful dialogue on eye, ever, eye level. There is this aspiration to take young people with a perspective and needs seriously. So this is a foundation for creating an encouraging and supportive climate for the hidden creativity to step forward and show itself. What do we need? And I am now, I am not talking about creativity in times of COVID because digital creativity was a task for youth work long before COVID and it remains a task for youth work, hopefully when these strange times we are living in now are over. So that's why I allow to say what creativity needs is a creative space, a, in ideal case, a physical space, which we, once again, in an ideal case, shape and design together with young people. It is often not the expensive, perfect finish and shiny that inspires creativity, but rather the rawness and the roughness. The creative space don't need, or they shouldn't be overloaded, but it's great if they carry some traces of the creative processes that took place there. We individuals are allowed to have our own creative chaos, but creative spaces used by many should not be messy. One important thing young people also learn in creative production processes is to respect, not waste, material and to take, respons take responsibility over the tools and to pass them over to the next group in good condition. And this brings me to tools and materials. Uh, a lot of interesting work is possible with no or almost no tools like you can work with you can work with bring your own devices approaches with the own smartphones of the young people but communities for communities it is money well spent to invest in easily accessible low threshold spaces like youth work spaces and public libraries and develop them into rich digital environments for digital learning. Yesterday I was working with a group of Austrian youth workers and this is how their uh, 
vision of youth center as a place for digital learning looked like with makerspace and art room i am not going to read loud you can read i have a question from for mark about what are best examples for leaving traces like many makerspaces are decorated with objects made there so this is one way to leave traces also like um, in a creative media production room. I like to have storyboards from previous productions hanging, still pictures celebrating previous work, movie posters advising festivals and the stuff. These were traces I'm talking about. Yes, and what we need are methods, right? Good sets of methods because entering into a space with endless possibilities can also be quite overwhelming. So in a situation where we could do anything, many of us decide to do nothing. That's why we work with triggers, familiar from different types of creativity techniques. It is not about performing a preset task, but uh, simply to suggest a way to get started. It is simply, it is easier to write a story about this object than to generally to write a story. A good advice is always the sh shortened by KISS. Keep it small and simple, which means to start small with something that gives you the first results quickly, celebrate the first results, and then move on to something bigger. We also work a lot with playful challenges, which produce the, a good amount of time pressure. And this lessens the pressure on the product because it feels different to say, this is the best I was able to do in 13 minutes than to say, this is the best I was able to do. And last, the important part of youth worker as, as a supportive element in this process. So I would like to discuss our role a little bit on my final slide. It's important we, there are many ways to be present in creative processes, but it's important we reflect our role within these processes and know what our part is and what is not our part. And I favor a good distance in the sense that the product is and should remain a product of the young people. So I am there to, to get the process started. I am there to support, but it's important for me to sit down and check if I have a fixed idea about where we are going to. And if I have this idea, it might be the product is not theirs, but it's mine and I am using them to produce something I want to do. Offering support is important. Being creative together is something sometimes really difficult and groups get frustrated, they get stuck. It's not about offering solutions because solutions are always my solutions, but often about telling them it is quite normal to get stuck. It is quite normal to have some trauma and, and fighting within the group. It's good to tell them, often it's enough to tell them, all groups have been where you are now. And they have managed to overcome these difficulties and end up with something they love. I would put a lot of emphasis on a good feedback culture, creating a good feedback culture within the team. According to my, my observation, sadly enough, young people today even more self-critical than they used to be. Learning to give praise lavishly. It's not about me telling them they are doing amazing stuff. It's about them telling it to each other. To develop rituals to mark and celebrate even small steps of success. This is not about random applause, but this is about earned applause and giving it often and lavishly, it's hugely important. It's also important to celebrate and recognize the small stuff, like the TikTok example I started with. Digital activities do not need to be mind-blowingly innovative to be relevant. 
more important is whether they relate to digital phenomena young people encounter in their everyday lives. As youth workers, we do not need to embrace all things digital. This is impossible. We do not have the time. It is totally okay to start where your own interests lay, to bring your personal interests and passions with you into the work. They are huge resources. But it's also important to keep on learning new stuff, to keep a learner's perspective on digital phenomenon. With this kind of mindset, you are a good partner for young people in their digital explorations. Mm -hmm.